Let's go over a solution to weekly mass challenge 65. Two circles are fine beta with radius 3 and 5 respectively or externally tangent at D. So let's think about this. So we have this circle alpha. So it's going to go like this. And we have a circle beta which is larger. Did I state that? I think I stated it right here with radius 3 and 5. So there's alpha and here is here is our beta, so here is the point of tangency, and what else do we know? We know AD is a diameter of alpha, BD is a diameter of beta, and G is the center of beta. So we know here is our A, and the center of alpha is going to be right here. Here is our B, and center of beta is going to be G located right there. Let's continue reading. E and F lie on alpha and beta respectively such that both points lie on the same side of AB. So we can possibly have E on the side, F on the side, but we cannot have E on the side and F on the side because they will be on opposite sides of AB. Okay, but we're not sure where E and F go for now, so let's read on. Keeping in mind that E and F are on the same side of AB, if FDB is 30 degrees and EDG and F all lie on the circle gamma, well, FDB is 30 degrees, that's helping us plot our F. So let's draw a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which looks something like that, that's 90 degrees, because DB is a diameter. We know this angle is 30 degrees and we have our point F, and we also know E, D, F, and G lie on the same circle gamma. So E, D, F, and G. So here are D, F, and G. And we know E lie on circle alpha somewhere around there. Let's start by drawing the unique circumcircle of triangle D, F, G. So of this triangle, which looks, pardon my inaccurate drawing, which looks something, something like this. So here is the circle gamma. Let's finish the question. Find the cosine of EAD. So we want to find cosine of this angle. So find the cosine of beta. And we wish to write our answer as an irreducible fraction. Before we go on, I want to recognize Gabriel N, who was the very first person to correctly answer this challenge problem with the answer 11 over 14. And I think Gabriel N's solution, which is going to be different from what I'm going to show you, is very clever. So I highly encourage you to read it and work through the missing steps for an interesting exercise. Anyway, huge props to Gabriel N for being the first person. Now let's actually attempt this ourselves. Just looking at AE, it seems like it's waiting to be extended all the way to circle gamma. So I will start by extending it and let's call this point C because we have not used C yet. And there's a few things we see, because AD is the diameter of alpha, this is 90 degrees, which means this thing is 90 degrees, which implies the segment CD is the diameter of circle gamma. So we have the center of circle gamma around there, we can label that H. Now, once we connect CF, because CD is the diameter, we know this thing is 90 degrees, which is telling us that C, F, and B are actually collinear. They make up a line. There are many ways of proceeding from here. Perhaps one of the fastest way is to realize this presence of this equilateral triangle, D, H, G. Why is that equilateral? Well, we know these two lengths are the same. Those are the red eye of the circle gamma. And we also know these two lengths are the same. Those are the red eye of circle beta, which means that this is HG is the mid segment of the triangle DCB. So if you look at this entire triangle, our segment HG is the mid segment parallel to CB. And this is telling us because we have this 30, 60, 90 triangle because of 30 and 90. That's telling us this thing is also 60 degrees because that's the mid segment, which means that HG and CB are parallel and the corresponding angles are equal. And because HG and HD are the same, those are red eye of circle gamma, we know that this entire angle is 60 degrees, which means this is also 60, and we have an equilateral triangle located right there. 
Now, remember that the radius of alpha was 3 and radius of beta was 5. So we know this length was 3 and this entire length was 5. We have shown that this is an equilateral triangle, which means the radius of the circle gamma, the green circle, is also 5. And that's actually telling us that this point H is at a distance of 5 from G, which means that our center of circle gamma technically should lie on the circle beta. So our drawing is a little bit messed up. So technically, our point H should be on circle beta. But it's not imperative that we fix it to find the cosine of beta. So I leave the drawing as it is. But technically, H should be right there if I actually draw this to scale. Anyway, now we have all the ingredients, if you look at it closely, to find the answer. Take a look at the triangle ACD. So this triangle, we know a bunch of things about this triangle. We know we have our angle data, which we want to find the cosine of. We know this entire length is a 6, twice the radius. And we know this entire length is a 10, twice the radius of gamma. 5 and another 5. And also, because we know this angle is 60 degrees, we know this angle is 120 degrees, so we know this angle as well. From here, it's a routine exercise to find the cosine of data. Letting this side be x and applying law of cosine gets us x squared is 36 plus 100 minus 10 times 6 times 2 times cosine of 120 or negative 1 half. I'm just applying law of cosine, looking at x and 120 degrees as the opposite side and angle. And this thing is going to get us 136, twos are going to cancel out, plus 60, also known as 196, which is telling us x is 14, square root of 196 is 14. Now cosine of data, applying law of cosines once again, but this time focusing on our data and 10 as opposite side and angle. Cosine of data is going to be 10 squared minus 14 squared minus 6 squared over 2 times 14 times 6. And this is going to be 100 minus 196 minus 36 over negative 2 times 14 times 6. That's minus 96. Take away another 36. That's minus 132. And we see that 6 goes nicely into 132, getting us 22. 2 and 22 gets us 11, and the negative signs are going to cancel out, leaving 11 over 14 at the end, and we are done. So the final answer to this geometry problem, weekly math challenge number 65, is 11 over 14.